Getting into the HSM side of Inventor here, we're going to go ahead and reopen our pump front cover part file here. And this is the one that we have saved with our three bodies in it that represent our stock. And for this particular part and example, we're going to go ahead and use this with the solid stock. We're going to machine this from a solid stock body. Now, to do this, first, first off, what we're going to do is we're going to actually turn the visibility on for this part. Now, to jump into our setup, we're going to use that block, and I'll show you in a moment how we're going to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to my cam tab here, and let's just review real quick kind of the process flow of working within Inventor HSM. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is that within a new part environment, uh, this did not jump straight over to the cam browser environment. And the reason for that is because there's no setup active yet. We did not create a setup yet for the cam browser to be activated. That's easy to remedy. You can just click on the setup folder here. But before we do that, again, let's review this, this panel so that you can see what the ribbon bar contains and how the workflow goes inside of Inventor HSM. Now, it's a top-down, left-right workflow, which is very similar to everything within Inventor with the exception here of the first panel. Now this panel here with Toolpath, this is kind of the the tools that you're going to use the most and they, they kind of keep that readily accessible in the top left corner. The next activates things like a setup or an internal organizational folder. Similarly, the pattern folder. Now this is used for multiple parts to create multiplication of parts or features that we can duplicate quickly within a pattern folder. The next tool and panel is going to be our drilling operational tool. Then we have all of our 2D operations and you can see each one of these with the drop down has a different functionality underneath it similar to all of the design tools within Inventor. Now the core tools are obviously up front that being face 2D adaptive clearing, 2D pocketing, and contour, the tool paths that you're going to use quite often. Now underneath that drop down arrow you'll see some of the tertiary operations that we can get into and that we'll be using to program our part. The next panel over is going to be our 3D milling followed by multi-axis and turning. Now you may not have these two panels or even this third panel depending on what level of HSM that you've purchased or the or if you're using the Express version, you'll only have these 2D tools to work with here. What you will have, though, is this orientation panel. Now, the thing to understand about this orientation panel is that this differs from your view tools in Inventor. It's not directly linked to Inventor's WCS that you're creating geometry off of. And that's very nice to know because this quickly orientates things to the existing WCS4 the part itself. Now you'll see that it, right now it is the exact same WCS that's used in Inventor. But that's because we haven't set up a part with a setup yet. It did however, once I've clicked on one of these tools, jump us into the CAM browser. Now you can switch back and forth to the model if you're going to be changing anything with geometry right here with this drop down arrow and this this is your selector for how your browser functions. Now you can see that now cam browser is in that selection so I can switch back and forth between my model and my cam. Within this manage panel you have your options for HSM. This directly influences H how HSM works with Inventor. Options in here for post-processing you can do things like keep temporary files. I do not recommend using any of these except for ask before overwrite. Make sure that that is ticked. That way when you post G code, it will prompt you before overriding the existing program. Next option, we have a task manager. Now this becomes more important when you're doing things like 3D or even a lot of work within 2D that you're going to process multiple toolpaths at the same time, kind of a batch processing system. And this keeps track of how your computer is performing those processes and also when they'll be completed. And then of course the external access to the tool library. Now what I mean by that is that this tool function accesses the tool library outside of the program. So this directly influences all of your tool libraries as far as being able to modify them without modifying them in a program. Now again that that means that 
it's not internal into the program itself but you're actually in the libraries and you can access this even from your home screen in the CAM web browser you can access this tool library as well as your options.